I stood in the cemetery of the old Jewish synagogue in Prague, feeling a sanctity beyond any I had ever felt in a house of worship. And I remembered the time when my rabbi had dismissed my curiosity in ancient Babylonian tales and sent me to the temple sanctuary to feel its sanctity. I felt nothing. And at the age of 19, I walked out of the temple for the last time as a practicing Jew. Yet on this day, nearly 6,000 miles and 40 years removed from that departure, I found myself walking through this cemetery, listening to our guide sharing several stories of the symbolism on each of these ancient gravestones, indicating from which of the original tribes each person had descended. And I remembered a very old bit of a story that my mother had told me when I was a child. She only knew a fragment herself, the story having already faded from memories by the time it had been shared with her. My mother only knew that Jews whose last name was Cohen were direct descendants of the most important of the original tribes, the chosen of the chosen, so to speak. So I asked our guide about the Cohen tribe. The guide smiled, pleased to be able to share with me the missing parts of the story. She spoke to me, not with a hint of scorn at my ignorance, as my rabbi always had, but with an air of caring, happy to be able to share with me the rest of my story. She told me that the Kohanim were indeed special and that they were believed to be the direct descendants of Aaron, Moses' brother, and that they were the tribe from which the priests came. To my surprise, she told me that it was the belief that the Savior was going to come from the Kohanim. They were, and continue to this day, among the Orthodox and some conservative branches of Judaism, accorded special privileges and responsibilities, while also being expected to live particularly undefiled lives, purer than that expected from other Jews. Among these restrictions was that they were not to see a dead body, or to enter cemeteries, or perform funerals. This, the guide explained, was why the Kohanim are buried only at the outer periphery of cemeteries. Several minutes later, as the group found itself at the periphery of the cemetery, she found me and explained that the gravestones with the symbol of the upraised hands giving blessings were those of the Kohanim. Then she turned to me, placed her hand gently on my shoulder, and said, These are your ancestors. I'll leave you here to spend some time with them. And just as gently, she led the rest of the group on to the next area of the cemetery that she wanted to tell them about. I found myself alone with a half dozen or so nearby Kohanim gravestones. I noticed that my knees were actually trembling. It was a precious moment. As I reflect on that moment, I can still feel the gentleness of her touch on my shoulder, the softness of her voice, the trembling in my knees, and the sanctity I felt at that moment in this place.